Do you still practice yoga? I mean, it's something. I still practice the base. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, there was a time in your life when you were really into yoga. It's I like, started like, being a student of yoga in 1990, so that's over 30 years ago. And um, I, I got to the point where I realized yoga is everything. You know, it's connecting the, the brain to the body and the mind to the spirit. Uh, so sitting down is yoga, uh, walking is yoga, eating is yoga, breathing is yoga, singing. It's yoga. Music is yoga. And but do you follow any particular school? Which is I started uh, with Ashtanga. Ashtanga. Ashtanga yoga. But this morning I did yoga at the hotel by the pool. But uh, it was nice. I find it interesting that in terms of collaborations, there is Chad Mami with Desert Rose, and more recently there have been Pink and Marshmallow, which is dreaming. Hmm. And Marshmallow is an electronic dance music DJ. Pink is this feisty rock and roll girl. So the reason for the collaboration, I mean, one is the shaggy bond, but musically, how do you think this collaboration might work? A marshmallow and pink things. You know, I'm always interested in my songs being reinterpreted by artists of a different genre. So when Marshmallow sent me this reinterpretation of uh, Fields of Gold, really, I was intrigued by it because I thought it was very modern. Yeah, I could hear it in, in dance clubs throughout the world. And then he said, well, why don't we do it as a, as a duet with, with a female? I said, well, who should we get? Pink is someone I've admired for, for many years. So it's just, it's, it's, you, 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 you mix a pie. You put an ing one ingredient in it, then another. You're not sure what's going to come out, but that's the excitement of it. And I think that song is uh, very very great. I think it's number 11 in the American charts or something. I don't, I don't. So it's done well. And um, people will hear the song who wouldn't normally have heard it. The movie soundtracks is one thing, but to compose for Broadway and with The Last Ship doing as well as it did, I mean, does that require a different aspect of Steam? Absolutely. I mean, that, that was the, one of the greatest adventures of my life, was, was writing a, a, a musical play about my hometown, about the shipyard you know, I, live, I live next door to, and the class that I came from, the community I came from. The most uh, interesting, difficult, uh, challenging adventure of my life, but it's still ongoing. And there's an opportunity that we could perform it uh, as an opera with a big 80-piece chorus and an orchestra. So it, it's ongoing. It's an evolving thing that uh, I, I regard as my legacy more than anything else. You know, I listen to other albums like Mercury Falling, Brand New Day, and I feel that they were the underdogs. They didn't get as much attention no. as some of the bigger ones. And as a fan, you always listen to the smaller ones. You love even the B-sides. Is there an album of yours that you thought was is really an underdog, which is actually... A gem like all your pieces of work are. We know my least uh, commercial record and the, the least understood of any of my records was The Soul Cages in 1990. And yet I get more um, mail about those songs than any other because the, the, the constituency it appeals to are the recently bereaved, yeah. you know, people who've lost their father or their mother. Why should they, I cry? They say, songs, oh, yeah. this song really helped me. And so it has a slow burn, you know, and, and that makes me uh, very satisfied that that song, that those songs have a usefulness for people. They're, they they become an emotional touchstone for people's memories. And that, you, as a songwriter, you can't get a better compliment. So it doesn't matter that it didn't sell 25, who cares? You know, I've sold enough records. Is that, is that a, a, a harp in the front of Soul Cages? The the album design. What what instrument is that? I mean, it's just. Oh, it's not. It's a ship. It's it's a ship. Is it's it? a ship with a welding tool. Oh, and it's a very uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, it looks as though it's it's a blown up. Uh, or, or people think it's a it's a watermelon or something, but it's actually. <laughs> it's very stark because it's, it's white, and then in the in the center is that. It was a Scottish artist. I've forgotten his name, and that was his representation of a, of a shipyard. How's the acting career going? Is there going to be more? How's no. the acting career going? My acting are, are career. The directors and the producers in the studio still calling? Uh, I made two films last year in France, and not big parts. I spoke in French. 
So it's not my vocation, but it's fun sometimes. What do you use the most appealing thing about India in Indians? About India and Indians? India and Indians. I'm fascinated by, by your culture. I'm fascinated by your history, your music, your architecture. Um, I, I'm accepting of all the contradictions that this country has, you know. Um, and I've been coming here for 40, 40 years, so I've seen massive, massive changes. Um, I like the Indian spirit. I like the uh, genius of Indians. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a student of your culture. And I've learned a great deal. That's you, lovely. Yeah. Anushka Shankar is also playing at Lollapalooza. You were on Anushka Shankar. Oh, yeah. The sitar player, Pandiji's daughter. I know, I know. And Anushka. you also played on her album. I mean, you, you collaborated on her album. I did. I've known her for a, since she was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so I used to go and visit Ravi in uh, San Diego when he lived there. Wow. And he would come to, to my shows. And a few years ago, I was in Rajasthan. And Anushka called me. She said, are you in, are you in, in uh, not, uh, sorry, Varanasi. Varanasi? Are you in Varanasi? Wow. I said, yeah, how do you know? She said, I was in the paper this morning. She said, would you like to come to a ceremony on the Ganges? We're, we're putting daddy into, into the river. I said, of course. And so I, I, I was there and I was part of the ceremony with, you know, uh, Ravi, the great Ravi Shankar meeting the Ganges. It was such a surreal Wonderful privilege to, to be there with them. But you, you worked on that album, uh, yeah. musically. And she worked on mine too. Yeah, she was on yeah, a song did. called uh, Book of My Life, yeah. which so, I made her retune the, the, the sitar. It was a nightmare. But anyway, she did it. Simply, when you go to a place like Varanasi, do you partake of local culture to the extent of going into the Ganges and taking a dip? I've taken a, taken a dip in the Ganges at Gangotri. Wow. When it's coming out of the glacier, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. cold. It's really cold. <laughs> I've actually, and I swam in, uh, at um, Varanasi too. Yeah. And do you try the local food too? Of course I do. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that, the, the, the waterfront there with all the temples. and the, you know, I love that there's a Shiva temple that's falling into the water. It's so romantic to me. And the Ghats, you know, are very, very profoundly interesting. So, it's fantastic. I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. I always want to Shukriya. One World, your station.